Hey, this is Melissa, and I'm out here doing a driveway session in um, the COVID era with Kelly and her great wheel. This is a wheel by Peter Elmer Leicht. He was a um, Moravian woodturner, second of a dynasty. His father, uh, Johan something, Simon, I think, Leicht, was before him. Peter and his father both very obligingly put their name and the year that they made the wheels. And so this one is 1863. His father had died in 1861. One of the uh, marks of production turning is that you tend to develop your style and then stick with it. And the Leisch are a perfect example of this, this, this sort of um, rounded movement here on the Maidens. And here you see it as well on the original upright are absolutely Leish. I, I think that I would successfully recognize Leish from across a crowded room because once they did that, father and son, they they did it the same way for virtually a century. I know of a Leish, of a Johann Leish wheel from 1817, and as I said, this is 1863. So they were um doing this for a while. This was found in North Carolina and is staying in North Carolina, which is cool because it's a North Carolina wheel that the, the uh, Johan had moved into the Salem community, fell out with the Moravians there and set up 10 miles away and competed with um, Old Salem for the rest of his long career. And then Peter continued with that. What I want to show now is something that I have been intending to do for some time. So I'm gonna hand this to Alan and I'm going to show with great wheel spinning how you get started, but mainly how I now spin, because none of my videos show how I now spin. I draft from the fold as a, I'm a long draw spinner, and I'm a mohair spinner, so I'm used to short staple and um, moving fast with that. Um, this is not, I forget what this is, I think it's mohair sliver, and this is something that we don't know that Kelly's brought, but what I wanted to show is how you set up and then how I spin now, and I will do this regardless of whether it's a double drive wheel, um, Irish wheel, which double drive just upside down, or a great wheel, I will now go to drafting from the fold. Somebody asked in uh, a spinning group that I'm co-administrator of that whether it is when you draft from the fold, is it semi-woolen or semi-worsted, and it depends on how well prepared it is. If it's prepared to where the fibers are fairly well aligned, then it is semi-worsted. If the fibers aren't very well aligned at all and you just kind of sort of found a fold and then spun it, then it's semi-woolen. And so, you know, it, it's a range in between there so i've used corn husk um don't wet them i use the ones that are sold for making tamales okay so nothing fancy here just dried and then i've tied on you might as well see this so that you're not doing all the silly stuff i did to get leader cords on so there's a piece of corn husk you can use a post-it note if you're desperate just not not sticky side and you want to be able to take this it, the, the goal is to be able to take your little um bit of of spinning off of here with and not off of the spindle itself and you would pile these up as you're going to see i'm going to going to um wrap this on in an acorn shape if you are a weaver you would cut this to a length that would fit inside your shuttle and you would drop it straight in and you would weave with with singles and you would be the chisel so i've wrapped this on now i've got a double length and I'm using that loop, and I'm going to go through, and I think it's a half inch, so 20 people can tell me down in comments what kind of knot this is. I'm going to do one. I do the same thing for all bobbins. I go through, bobbin, spindles, quills, doesn't matter. I go through, and then I go the other way and go through the double thickness again, and this way I've got a knot that tightens regardless of which way I go. Now, I want some room. Kelly, I'm giving you everything that you've gotten, okay? I want some room here because I want a little bit of a friction draw here and then I'm going to come off the end like so. When I was first learning how to spin on a great wheel, I lost, I'm an anxious kind of person and a worrier by nature, uptight is what it's normally called, and I couldn't figure out how the spindle made it twist and that's because it doesn't. All it is is a corner that you're turning. You will need to turn that corner so it doesn't come back off, but you don't want to wind on itself okay so your angle is whatever angle works for your fiber where it's just kind of bumping along at the end what turns it is 
this drive being driven by the wheel and the drive band just as if this were a drop spindle. If this were a drop spindle, you wouldn't be mystified because that would be the whorl and that would be what was providing the twist. In this case, it's a drive band uh, working in about a 40 to 1 ratio because great wheels are built for speed. Now, drafting from the fold means that you find the fiber, and I'm going to go down to about a finger. Okay, so that's a, that's a finger. Okay, drafting from the fold means you wrap it over your finger and you draft. That's the fold is somewhere in the fiber itself. There's no other fold, okay? And one of the things that you need to remember to do when you're spinning this way is point your finger where you're spinning, like your Spider-Man or Spider-Woman or Spider-Person or whatever, okay? Not away or something like that. Point straight at it, all right? Now, to get going, I need some twist, right? We know that. So now I've got twist. And as I told Kelly, the feeling that this has when you're holding it and it's popping off the end of that spindle is kind of like when your car drives off the edge of the road and the tire is bumping over there on the gravel or the grass or whatever that's what it feels like is bump 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 now see i've got some i've got some spin now i like to not trust my join and so what I do as quickly as I can, no matter what I'm spinning, is I get that join onto the bobbin. Then over I come, and bump, 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 bump. There I go. One of the ways that you practice this is that by moving, and I should, I should do what I've said to do, which is point where I'm, I actually don't always. Sometimes I, I do like that because that's where the fold is. It'll travel in the fold, okay? I'm also teaching Kelly at the same time that I'm saying this, so I'm watching to see that Kelly understands, and I hope that you do too. Um, I'm going to show you how to dress that. But one of the practice things that you do is get a fiber that you like. Don't be fighting, but one thing at a time. So fight yourself, not the fiber, okay? Get a fiber that you like and practice making it thick or thin just by your hand and the speed. Thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, okay? Um, weave it or something. Make it make a cool scarf. But, but that's what you would practice. And so there's a sorry join. So there it is thicker. I pick up my speed and slow down my draft. And then here it comes thinner because I need to back up. Here it comes thinner, so I've thinned down to actually what's kind of a nice little, nice little thread there. Now, that's not there, so we'll cover it. As Julia Child said, who else is going to see it? Okay, now, when you have come out long draw, Oh, Alan, we go on my hand. They might as well see a full thing. My hand is there, and it's spinning the wheel clockwise. I always spin this way. It's not out here. Sometimes I spin on there, but that's just what I'm showing off, okay? The the norm is back here, or you can use a wheel boy, which kind of looks like a um fruit pounder. Remember how they pulp fruit through colanders and stuff, okay? Mm -mm -mm. It's normally smaller. And you would see if the spinner before you had used one, you would see where the fire, where the wood fibers were compressed at the push spot. I don't particularly like them, but they're cool. Okay. Um, but now what I want to do is show you how to put it on. So I've spun, and let's pretend that's long draw. Okay. I mean, it's long draw, but it's short. Okay. What I do is I go forward counterclockwise enough to where that's in line. And then I wind onto my quill and then I come back out. Okay. So that's that, but I do want to show you one other thing, okay? Right now, I'm either doing S or Z. I don't pay any attention to it. I'm, I'm spinning clockwise, okay? Um, if I wanted to spin counterclockwise, you would think maybe I would move the wheel counterclockwise, but no, I don't. What you do is you loosen your tension, take off your drive band, give it one twist, and put it back on. Tighten your tension. It'll take slightly less, okay, but not much less, right? And it'll spin in the opposite direction while you're still doing what your muscle memory knows how to do, which is to spin clockwise here, okay? So if you need to spin singles that are different twist directions, such as for a tweed where you want them to, where you want their little ridges for your 45s to really show up, then your warp and your weft have to be spun in different directions so that they roll into each other. If you want it to lie nice and nice and flat, you, your warp and your weft need to be spun the same way so that they kind of spoon into each other. 
that way, okay? If also you like extreme spinning and you're living dangerously or you only have a great wheel, this is the same way that you would ply. Thank you.